The Bible is full of surprises and here we have a whole book that is about sexual love and it's got a whole load of stuff that I think are great tips for dating. And so where do we begin? Verse 2 says, your love is more delightful than wine. And what the word love means there is love making. So it's literally the opening statement of this, Bible, this book of the Bible is your sex is better than wine. And um, you see the whole story is uh, it's attributed to Solomon and it's about a relationship between a king and his maiden. And in this, it celebrates the strength and the depth and the power of human love and sex. And a couple of verses, I think, give us some insights into what we should expect to be as partners to others and also what we should expect from those uh, who we make these sorts of commitments to. The first one, verse 13 of chapter one, my beloved is to me like a sachet of myrrh resting between my breasts. That refers to the fact that the women back in the day would put little sachets of myrrh between their breasts before they went to sleep at night. And as the warmth of their body affected the myrrh, so the fragrance would be released so that when they woke up, they would smell brilliant. And she's saying here, my lover makes me smell amazing. He makes me smell like I've, you know, like I, I've, I'm covered in perfume. Is that how um, our partners are making us feel? The people that we are entering into these sorts of relationships with, do they make us smell great? And by that, I mean, do, do, you, do you end up feeling like you're smelling of joy and you're smelling of life and you're, um, you're smelling of love? Or do they wear us down and... All relationships are going to be hard, but ultimately is that we should be enhanced by them. And we should also be looking to make others smell great, as it were, not just by buying them perfume, but by calling out all that is great in them and all that God has put into them. A little later, I am like a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys, chapter two, verse one. That sounds like she's saying a nice thing about herself, but lilies of the valleys were very common. So she's just saying, I'm just another one. It's like me saying, I'm a blade of grass. That doesn't sound like I'm bigging myself up because I'm not. She's not bigging herself up. She thinks I'm just another one. I'm just, I'm just a nobody. Nobody really notices me. And his response is, like a lily among thorns is my darling among the young women, i.e. no, you're actually incredibly special. And in every romantic relationship before God that works is when we see the God-given uniqueness that every person carries. What is unique about the person you're dating? What do you love about them? How are you going to call that out of them? How are you going to support them in that? And vice versa, how are they doing that for you? And then finally, like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among the young men. If you've got a boyfriend, text him and tell him you think he's like an apple tree. I delight to sit in his shade and don't tell him this next bit. His fruit is sweet to my taste because that means exactly what you're thinking it means. The thing about sitting in the shade of the other is um, the sun would have burned and, and darkened people's skin. It wasn't a good thing back in those days. So they would sit in the shade for protection from the sun. Often you probably find the same thing. I find life wears me down and it burns you in all sorts of areas. And what you need in that time is you need relationships. You can, you can peep, whether it's friendships or it's a romantic relationship where you can go and you can find shelter and protection. That's what we should be providing for those who we are, uh, who we love. We're, we're to protect them and to shelter them and to help them find healing and love in a world, a world that can be harsh and difficult. So where's that in your relationships and how are you doing that? for other people.